afternoon guys. A lot better day today. Uh, what a difference. See the sunshine. And the beauty about that is, it's heated this plastic up. And because my son Tony has came through today, I've managed to achieve, or rather he has, or we have, getting all this polytunnel tightened up in the hot weather. So we've got the polytunnel tightened up. I've now got where the seams are, I've got the polytunnel tape on to waterproof it and strengthen it on the seams. I've got the windows all sealed up with polytunnel tape. And we've stretched this cover down and it's lovely and tight now. Once it cools down, it'll shrink and tighten even more. But even as it is now, it looks really good. If you can see now on the ridge, you can actually see how tight that is. So, very happy with that. Tony's run around and cut all the grass for me as well, so that's another great job out of the way for now. Um, it really does make a big difference when Tony lands and gives me a hand. He's just come back off his holidays. And so he's now just in here. And we're going to put this new bed in here. You want to say hi? Hi everyone. That's Tony, my son. For those who haven't uh, seen Tony in any of the other videos. And we're now just going to put this second bed into here. Whilst I've got Tony here to help me humping all these bags. <laughs> As you know, he takes it out of me. So I'm making best use of his time he's got. So we've now got the uh, second bed with the uh, boards in and lined. In about a tenth of the time it would have taken me on your own. And Tony's now just starting to tip the first round of compost into the bed. So we're getting there guys. We're going to need a lot more compost to fill these two beds up of course. But that's the hard work done now. And it's just a case of topping this up. As and each time I have a visit to the allotment, another 10 bags in the car each time until we get this filled up. Although I do have another 10 bags in the car, and I've got another, I think there's another 10 bags there, so we probably can get this finished today. Alright guys, as you can see, that's a great job jobbed. Now these two trees are sunken in the pots for the time being, but they're not going to stay in the pots, they're only put in there because when we were putting the level on the bed, I thought, well, I'm going to be using the compost from out of here, so we might as well just sink them in and fill around them, and that's the position these two are going in. Um, these aren't planted yet. Nothing's really planted properly as yet, but that was just to give us an idea. So this bed is now fully... It's, uh, it's had 18 bags of compost in there to fill that, and I've got three, four, five, six, seven left here. I'm probably going to need another ten just to finish this off. And then we need a couple of bags of wood chips, maybe three or four bags of wood chips to put in the path. The wood won't be staying there, they're just holding the plastic down for now. And then uh, we'll get a bit of a level on the path. Uh, as you can see it runs steep, so what we'll do is we'll just build it relatively level. We're not coming up to the top. Uh, we're just going to put a level in there, so I'm walking on straight ground at least. And uh, we're having an early finish today. Tony needs to go now, he's got to go to his job. And I've had enough for today. Tony's done 90% of the work as usual, but I burned myself out yesterday. And uh, I'm going to have an early finish today. I'm off all next week, so we'll be back up pottering and maybe get this planted out tomorrow once I get a bit more compost. So we'll just say a massive thanks to Tony. And uh, I just need to tidy my tools up now and tidy a few bits and pieces away. Right, that's been a really, really productive day, guys. Um, I'm absolutely delighted when Tony lands up and gets so much more done when he uh, arrives. Uh, he's a lot younger and fitter than I am. And uh, that's the only thing that I really miss now. But uh, I can still do things little and often. Um, but I obviously tell you much quicker than I used to. So uh, big massive thanks to Tony as always. Right. 
the next day we're back in the polytunnel, as you can see. And I've now finished that side of the bed. We've got this one more or less finished yesterday. We've put the dividing board in here now so we can get all of the blueberries in here. So we've put, I think it's four bags of compost in there up to now. And what I've got here is a bag of ericaceous compost, 50 litre bag. And then I've got half a bag of farmyard manure as well, which is a little bit acidic as well as the top dressing. And when you water this, it will wash it down to the roots. So I'm putting this up on as a top layer, but I will tickle it in with the garden claw. If I could hear my father's voice, he would tell me to move on. Say I'll be just fine Yeah He would tell me we have time Time to laugh and time to heal A favorite song is on repeat Drinking wine until the dawn Knowing soon we'll be back home I just want to show you this. So what I'm doing is I'm breaking off the soil. This is drastic action. But I'm breaking off the entire... You can see the roots are still alive. But in here is absolute... It's original, solid clear from where it was exported, basically. So it's going to have to be drastic measures with this one. It's just a solid clear ball, sodden wet. So into a bucket of water and get all of this off and it'll go in bare rooted this one and yes it'll take longer to come back but it should thrive after that. That's the hopes anyway so let's get that into a bucket of water. Now this is a drastic measure to save a tree from drowning basically which is what this one is doing and I'm going to remove this card as well for now but th by the time I've cleaned off all the bad and dead leaves on this there's one leaf left on this plant and that's it so the only way to try and save its life is to clean off all, all of the medium and you think, well, if it's drowning, why are you putting it in a bucket of water? Well, this is just to get the soil off. It'll soon get oxygen at the roots again. As you can see, the, the roots are already cleaning up. I just need to get all of its old medium off because it was obviously mostly clay. And clay just holds onto water or dries out completely. And uh, there's no happy medium with it. So I'm just going to tickle the roots. And the water helps to release all of the old compacted clay around the root ball. And we're left with a nice root structure, as you can see. So, this now going into the fresh beds in here um, is going to give it its best possible chance. And there is one leaf left on the tree. And that should be sufficient now that we've treated it. Yes, this is a shock transplant. But I have every faith that it will come back. Right, finally. 
we're finished. I'll give you a little look at what we've got. So I'm pleased I've got this um, sunshade up. So we've got blueberries in here. That one might not make it. We'll pull it out if it doesn't. This one's looking a bit ropey. In fact, they're all looking a bit ropey, but hopefully now they've all been watered in and hopefully they're going to make it now. And I was nearly going to throw this away. This is a crimson bonfire peach. And I bought it as bare root. I bought two of them. And they've never done anything at all when I planted them. And all of a sudden this one's put a little bit of leaf out. I was, just, I was actually just going to bin it. So I've planted the, that in the corner of here. If it does get established we'll move it to more, somewhere more suitable. So that's the blueberries and that one crimson bonfire peach. Then we've got the lime. Which is now bursting into flower but of course these are all going to be set back now as a result of the shock transplant but we've tried to be as careful as we can. They might soak and uh, go back or we might get lucky and they might thrive. But even so, it'll be about a week of soaking I would think. Then I've got another crimson bonfire peach here which I've been threatening to get in the ground for long enough. And you can see it has actually got peaches on. They don't look particularly uh, edible. And I probably won't be eating these ones this year. But you can see it is now putting out new growth on the top as well. Now it's in here, it'll really make out like the one in the other polydonal. This is our... Uh, uh, um, this is the grapefruit. And as I said, we nearly lost that one as well. The stalks do still appear to be alive. And we've got a bit of leaf on here. So we're going to give this a chance to come back. This one here is a little kaffir lime. You basically use the leaves in cooking and that's all. It doesn't actually put any limes on that I'm aware of. Um, basically, you use the leaves. And this is a little plant I bought 12 months ago. And it's sat in that pot the whole time. How it's still alive, I don't know. But I'll just put that in there for now because there's the labels on it. Till I get a label wrote out. I've just tucked all of the labels down between the plastic and the uh, scaffolding boards. Then we've got a mandarin. Again, very, very anemic it looks. I actually give that in a wash off as well because it was caked solid and planted that. So the ones that are being washed off are really, really going to... They'll either really, really suffer or really, really benefit one of the two. And this is the poor, sad orange tree with one leaf. But... I still feel these will make a comeback. If they don't, we pull them out, we'll buy some new ones and replace them. So that's that side down there, guys. Then down here, probably the healthiest of the lot that survived so far. And this is a mandarin, putting out lots of flower, but that might all drop off now that it's being shock transplanted. But we'll see. Then I've got my little fig tree. Uh, on a dwarf rootstock and then we've got a uh, fuchsia just planted in there for flowers to attract the pollinators we've got a, another nectarine with nectarines on again they don't look too edible and we won't be eating them this year round but once it gets established next year we should get proper full-size nectarines on this this lemon tree has got some nice lemons on as you can see, still putting them on. One or two have died. Just break them off. They're only taking the goodness from the plant. And that's because of the neglect. Um, but there are new flowers coming on. Again, with the shock transplant, it might drop the fruit and or the flowers. But lemons pretty much flower all year round. Uh, another nectarine. This one did have, oh yeah, it still has got one on. This one's got one on. It had lots, but they've all dropped off because they've basically been neglected. They were drying out, then they were getting too wet, then they were drying out. But again, now they're in here, they'll get better care. And we've got another fuchsia here. And then last but not least, another lemon. 
with lemons on and flowers. So, as I say, it may drop the fruits, it may drop the flowers, or it might just thrive now they're in here. They've all had a good soak. They won't be getting another one for at least two or three days, unless the weather is extremely hot. As always, guys, I really do appreciate all your likes, dislikes, and your comments. If it's your first time here, hit that little subscribe button. Select the bell icon. Select all. And every time I put up a new video, you'll be alerted. It's totally free. Completely free. And I really do appreciate everyone who's supported me so far. For now, guys, as always, wherever you are in the world, please stay safe. Be practical. And keep yourselves out of harm's way. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you again in the next video.